Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to be uh, coming. It's still a great honor to be with you. I'm uh, Baptiste David. I'm a French researcher, but I'm working in Germany in uh, Heidelberg, precisely. And uh, I'm more specialized on Windows operating system, but today I'm going to talk about something else. And uh, that's why I'm here. We are going to talk about Captive Portal. So we come from Heidelberg, which is literary in the southwest of Germany, so a bit far from Berlin. We have a very nice view, and uh, my company is called EANW. And it's still a great pleasure to be with you today. So, uh, of the agenda of today, we are going to talk about Captive Portal, Network Access Controllers, that's the other name of this technology. And uh, we are going to, to show with one example that some vulnerabilities we can find in such products. But first of all, and it's things which is very important, this is for a lot of this project, uh, open source tools, and it means that people are doing that on their free time in a way, so they deeply deserve a great respect for that. So the notion of captive portal first. Let's imagine you have access to internet, and on this internet you have a router, which is technically speaking your internet box. And uh, you can have a switch on your uh, own network, different computers over there, and why not a free uh, hotspot Wi-Fi. And the thing is, in this situation, when you offer a free Wi-Fi for anyone, anyone can connect to this Wi-Fi. And you need to be able to trace everything just for liquid reason. If there is something bad on your network, for instance, someone going on a forbidden website or doing something bad, from a justice point of view, it matters to be able to say, ah, it's not me, it's him or her. You see, this is exactly the point of the captive portal. And you find some everywhere. For instance, in this hotel, when you try to connect to the Novotel uh, free hotspot Wi-Fi, you are intercepted directly by a machine which is just before the internet box and all uh, internet connections. And you have a sort of web page which asks you for what do you want to, to be or who are you, your mail address, and confirm blah, blah, blah. You use uh, your mail address most of the time. But anyway, the goal is just to track people with this kind of tool. The same way uh, if some people took the train like me, uh, when you go to the train and you get access to the Wi-Fi in DB uh, trains, you have the same stuff. You are intercept on a web page where you need to authenticate yourself, for instance, with your train tickets numbers. Right? Okay, great. So that's the purpose of these tools, which are designed to authenticate and protect the identity and providing filtering mechanisms. So more or less, it's kind of big man in the middle stuff. Even if most of the tools are not breaking HTTPS connection, they are just literally just checking you are trying to access this website and that's all. From, from technically speaking point of view. But the goal is still to ensure confidentiality, integrity, availability, and authenticity, and no reputation of data, which are passed into them. And the goal is literally to connect and to identify who is connected. So user or password is the default behavior of such a tool. More theoretically speaking, it's just a proxy. It's just a machine in the middle which makes transfer of data and just take a log of every connection which are inside. But captive portals are weak by design. Remember, they are designed to track what you are doing. And you can bypass them with a simple proxy. For instance, you have a going to uh, example.com. You go to the captive portal, which makes the logging procedures directly in its log file. And then you go to the routers, go to internet, and get access to example. And that way, this is a normal behavior of captive portal. You are logged to this computer, go to this website. But if you use a proxy, for instance, proxy.com, and where you embedded your first request of example.com, you go to the captive portal, which only sees the proxy request and which looks for the proxy and then you can continue, go to internet, go to the proxy and the proxy forwards the request for you to example.com. So you see captive portal which are just proxy are literally bypassed by design by other proxies. So it's by design vulnerability in a way of their own purposes. But for the sake of simplicity, let's consider this point does not exist or is not so relevant. After all, I have a talk to do. Let's see what we can do better. Let me introduce you Alcazar. Alcazar is a captive portal developed by the French Department of Defense originally, because in France we like to have kind of sovereignty of softwares and everything like that. So it's coming from the Department of Defense in some open source tools, which is literally a network access controller. Now it's a free tool, open source, there is a community behind with uh, developers, so if one day you want to, to, to participate, you are always free, free to come. 
It's uh, compliant with the French law, which is quite strict in terms of um, notion of privacy and uh, different European Commission regulation, etc. And it's technically speaking, it's just a regular machine, a regular computer with Magia operating system on that. For those who are not aware of Magia, it's just a fork of Mondrake years ago. Okay, it's just Linux distribution for short. And the project is written mostly. In PHP, Bash script, etc. But um, let me show you how they manage language. And um, like that. With big switch case, as if per language. So the quality of the code is, um, how say that? It could be improved, for short. And the architecture is, um, well, um, you're here. <laughs> and it's kind of spaghetti. The tools. Uh, the most important point is fact is directly right in the left. It's what we call Kuvashili. Technically speaking, the whole project is designed around Kuvashili as a big interface of Kuvashili. Kuvashili is an open source project which is here to intercept any connections and make logs of these connections. So that's the heart of the system. And when you first connect to this system, you go to two pages. Welcome to. Oh, it's written in French. Sorry. No, it's in English. And it's welcome to Alcaza. You can open a session. You can install the root certificate to ensure that everything is in HTTPS. Change your password, and you can directly access user password regularly. And this is interesting to see that authentication is a key point for network access controller. We are not going just to connect on Google, on Microsoft, etc. We just be, need to ensure that it's really you which is technically connected. And when we check, it's surprising by default when you install Alcaza and you try first to connect to it, you've got not secure connection on top. <laughs> Strange. The first surprise is that the connection, it's authentication connection is done in HTTP without CS. It's directly HTTP stuff, HTTP post request to be precise. And the programs come from uh, Kuva Chile, technically speaking, which is not very... <sighs> It's not very at home dealing with HTTPS natively. So by default, Alcaza is installed in HTTP mode to make interceptions, which makes your password uh, free password, to make it short. Uh, but it's written directly in the documentation of Alcaza that Alcaza is not configured to encrypt user authentication flows, and you, the users, accept the risk of these flows being intercepted. So I decide to make people live with risk. That's an interesting project. More technically speaking, if you try directly to connect to a website without getting access to the main interception page where you can give your password and your email, you will get an error because it's definitively Kuvashili, which is not doing the job correctly. It's a very whole project in a way. Um, what is interesting is that there is no encryption or hash of password. If you intercept it with HTTPS, which is doable by default, Password, everything is in clear. So, well, it's not directly a vulnerability, but it's, it gives directly your password. At least the hash would have been better just to not give the authenticate, the original text, uh, which is carried inside the, the system. Of course, the documentation explains that we can use Let's Encrypt so that we can directly make our own domain name on the captive portal and uh, to link this uh, domain name to a certificate so that your navigators can check that everything is correct and reducing the risk of man-in-the-middle attack. So that's the way of doing stuff. But there is a second surprise. Let me explain you the situation. The web browsers provide a user and a password which is directly provided to Alcazar web page. Of course, it's in clear text, but anyway. The page, intercept.php, which is the intercepting page, is ciphering the password. Okay, why not? And the password is sent back to your browsers, ciphered, so that your web browser transfer it to Alcaza one more time on a different port. So technically speaking, we just cipher it data we already sent in clear text. So that's the Strange design we we are we are facing like that. But let's talk about the ciphering process. Did you heard about do not do your own cryptography? <laughs> Guess what? They did. 
and uh, maybe not for the best. So at the beginning, uh, to, to describe you the, the algorithm, they provide you a challenge numbers for every connection. It's a random number if you want, but it's directly inside the get or post request when you connect to the interception page. So it's free food, literally speaking. So this one is uh, then transformed to, exa to string to hexadecimal, and it's concatenated with a global value, which is called UAM secret, which is defined when the captive portal Alcazar is installed the first time on the machine, at setup time, if you want. And then we make MD5. And, well, uh, I hear that it's a bit funny, but uh, this project is going to use MD5 at the wrong place, which means everywhere. <laughs> And then we pack, we have the new challenge. There is a string to check with the password size. Yes, this clear text password size, but anyway. And so that we make the new hash repeated the size of the password at least. So that's quite a strange way to manage hash, but why not? In the end, there is a transform for hexadecimal. And then you have the XOR, which is a one-time pied encryption between the MD5 hash of your challenge hexadecimal EOM secret and uh, your password directly. And it generates to you the pub password, which is the name of the value. And in the end, this one is given back to your web browser through the either function. And the either function is going to make the redirection directly to Kuvashili on Alcazar's side. So this is how it works behind the stage. So yes, original cryptography, but the good point is directly put the source in the comments thanks to blah, 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 blah. So everyone using Kuvashili is about to use these same techniques. So once you see Kuvashili, you have the same problem everywhere, every time, everywhere. So of course, MD5 is obsolete, but it's due to Kuvashili, which is also obsolete. This is a project which is not really maintained anymore. There is few commits from time to time, but it's not very active. So it's from my point of view, low fruits for new CD if you have time. And uh, the second problem is that URM secret is shared between all users, which makes that if you have a set of clear text and password by just intercepting stuff, with Ashcat, you can, in a way, try to guess what is the original URM secret and be able to decrypt every password of every user. So that's quite risky strategy, technically speaking. That's for native user when you authenticate on the captive portal. But you can have administrator of the captive portal, the people who are giving you the access, or register your user with a password, etc., etc. So that's, uh, I would say, administrator panel, and it's technically called inside Alcazar Control Center, ACC for short. Remember? Great. Uh, this is a place to be because you can administrate literally the whole system from that place. And uh, the point is that they are using an authentication method, uh, which looks like this one, which is close to HTT access you could have um, with uh, Apache server. But it's not an Apache server behind the stage, it's uh, a light HTTPD server. So it's called mode auth for model of authentication. And they decided to use HTTP digest authentication mechanism, which is a bit old, but not so bad. But the problem is uh, when you intercept the connections, which is correct uh, from the implementation, you don't have the algorithm which is used to exchange with the hash. There is no hash provided. We have the hash of the password, but we don't have the algorithm which is used. And if you check directly in the AFC driving HTTP digest authentication, they are going to use by default MD5 hash. Told you so. It's the wrong place to use that. So technically speaking, you just need to wait that the administrator connects to the ACC, intercepts the connections. If there is no real LTLS, uh, secure TLS deployment of certificate, you retrieve the MD5, and you can directly use Ashcat to get the clear text password. It's not so hard to do. So this is how you can be admin on this captive portal for very short. But there is more. They decided to correct the problem, and between the two versions, what changes? MD5 has been transformed to SHI-256, which is quite good, technically speaking. You see? It's a good point that we have the new hash uh, when we, we provide them this information. 
So now we have still the password, which is whatever but interceptable, but it's not a big deal because if it's correctly done, you cannot intercept. It's you have the while, you have the pack, and everything works fine because uh, you, well, that's a hash. Looks short for SHA 256, isn't it? Because uh, uh, if, if I'm trying just for short, you see, normally that's the normal size of the hash, and this is, this one is much shorter, right? That's, even for MD5, it should be short, so it's too short. So let's check what is happening in the algorithm. It's in that loop that the problem is. In fact, we are concatenating the ashid challenge as long as the size of the password is, which is interesting. But if the password is short, you concatenate nothing. So just to make you a little uh, view, if the new challenge is below password size, we are going to copy new challenge the number of time required even more than what we expected. But in the situation where your password is not enough big, you are not just keeping new challenge the size it is. And with the XOR, the last one time pied password uh, uh, ciphering process, is they only keep with PHP the minimum size of both. So we just have something of hash, which is the same size of your original password, which is cool so that we can guess the size of your password. Less possibility to check with Ashcat. That's cool. So you can easily check. I just use A as a password. And as you can see, we have just one hexadecimal number. We use AA. We have two hexadecimal number and so on. So it's literally like that. <laughs> you directly have access to, to, to this point. And it makes the password easy to guess by size. But even more, if you try to brute force, Password in a way. You don't need to have a perfect collision with SHA 250. You just need to have a partial collision. Only the first bytes are enough for colliding. Technically speaking, if you want to have a password secure, at least as secure as SHA 256, you need to have a password whose has minimum 32 characters. This is a promotion for security in a way. <laughs> But that's, that's, that's the point. So you have a lot of problem and you have partial colliding on that. But there is more. And I need to thank my colleagues of a colleague of mine in NW, which is called, uh, Anes Moore, uh, which provided me great help, uh, for, 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 for this, uh, for this part. Uh, we can take directly the control of the captive portal. But, First of all, before going a bit deeper, I need just to warn in the room. Um, this vulnerability is still under correction from their side. So for security reason, I don't give details where the vulnerability exactly is. I'm just going to explain the general purpose. Of course, once the vulnerability will be corrected, the slide will be available for clear text for anyone. Okay? So I trust in you not to do anything stupid with that. If you are looking in the source code of uh, the access uh, controller, so the, the admin panel of the captive portal, uh, you can see that there is direct action from PHP with exec directly with studio command, which is quite, <laughs> quite fun. But honestly, they are all protected correctly with escape shell arguments as required in the state of the art of PHP. So that's quite correct. So they are using that a lot of in uh, ACC manager, so which makes sense because you need to drive the, 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 the captive portal in a way. And from time to time, they use that directly outside, directly in the part where the user can access. So it's secure, but you see, it's you still like risk <laughs> to go there <laughs> because you are just running command <laughs> for everyone and not authenticated. So if you go for the captive portal for administrators, this is how it looks like. You can have directly IP address of everyone, MAC address, etc. So you've got a lot of information which are very interesting. You can block, you can add admin, remove of administrator. You're the master of your goal to make it short. So that's, that's very in interesting. And let me introduce you a very specific PHP pages. I changed the slide because it's, it's not finished yet to be corrected, but you, you got my point. And um, it's part of the ACC. And inside this page, we have a post request, so something the user can directly control, which is directly stored in the values. And these values is directly used in a lot of exec commands. So that's 
quite normal situation, but let's take a look how it works technically speaking. We take the post control and we store that into a value. Of course, the post control, it's controlled by the user, from instance, your web navigator, if you want. You store in the value. And if we are checking just for emulating uh, PHP from, from Sandbox, I'm writing something with random characters we don't care about, especially with the pipe. I like the pipe in such situation, but who knows? And it's correctly executed. And you've got quotation mark at left and right to escape any pipe exploitation, which is good. So that we can directly use that in the command line. And with the command line, we have directly that stuff with, of course, the two quotation mark. But the problem is that the tool behind the stage which receives these comments does not like the quotation mark. It doesn't understand it. It's not designed for that. So guess what? If the quotation mark is a problem, we remove them. So of course, it works from PHP point of view. And in the end, <laughs> you have no more quotation mark. Which is exactly what we want. We should accomplish. We just remove the security we put first. <laughs> And this is a real problem because we de desanitize uh, the content provided by the user and, you know, negated, something negated makes something positive from the attacker point of view, at least. <laughs> so it's definitely unsecure, but it's not exactly exploitable directly because it's an ACC, so admin access control. And as you can see, you should be at least first log as administrator to get access to that. Okay, so it's kind of administrators against administrators. But did you heard about cross-site request forgery attacks? Usually, it's when you are logged as uh, an administrator on or any account. For instance, you go to Twitter, you log yourself, and uh, it's a kind of token which is directly provided to you by um, Twitter in every post request so that you can resend it back. So that for your tab where you have Twitter, you are always authenticated on that tab. And if someone sends you a link, you click on the link, there is no sublinks in the page that can directly reuse your Twitter account because you already logged with your Twitter account. Normally, it's implemented. Let's check. So... It's, does the video is running? I need the video to be running. Yep, it's running. Okay, great. So I'm logging as any uh, HTTXS admin. I, I put a very complex password like admin, you see. But it's for demonstration purposes. And we have the first ICC uh, connection. So ICC is the name of the page. And as you can see in response header, I have nothing like CRSF token. Nothing is exchanged. And I can go to another page, for instance, to, to filter connections for any users. And we will check if there is a server self token or a token provided. We go down. There is a lot of pictures provided. Go to access our filter page. Okay. And you see, Ripon is there, still no token. And in the end, let me just move. I will use my voice as best possible. But in authorization, we have DJS username. We have the hash, respond, everything like that. But we don't have a token. Which means that we can do anything we want. We can literally reopen a tab. We will be automatically reconnected. Even better, you can restart <laughs> the Firefox. <laughs> And you can, you still need to go to, to have the first Firefox install or Google Chrome instance uh, anyway. And you can directly reconnect without authenticating yourself. It's very cool, very pleasant stuff. That means for, for user experience point of view of the administrator, you just log once and it's, it's, it's it works too well. So now we are going to combine that with the remote code execution we have seen, serious F token, and it should uh, work. And so we have uh, two requirements. The first is that the attacker controls the web uh, server. <laughs> Easy. And next, we are going to suppose that we are going to send um, that the administrator is at, at least log once with uh, the, um, the web navigator. At least that. So we send, for instance, 
uh, an email to the administrator, like uh, dear Alcazar administrator, we have a problem access this website. Please click on it. Will you have an ID? All the best, the gentil hacker. There is a link. We click on the link, it's just a link after all. And uh, the problem is that uh, this link is under our control and is going to make a post request directly on the page, which has the vulnerability we have seen previously. To make a reverse shell or SSH connection or anything you want, technically speaking, you can do anything you want. You can just remove the former administrator, add yourself, it makes fun, anything you want is doable. And in addition, I remember to you, the commands were launched with sudo. So we are root privileged directly. In the end, we can still perform a last redirection, for instance, to Dasvelt or any website so that it's making stills for the administrators. It's directly perfect. Demo? So first, we log on Alcazar, just to show that uh, the interface is responsive, and uh, uh, to show you that there is two network cards, because you need to have uh, a foot on two networks, the local network and internet network, to be a true uh, network access controller. This is my attacking virtual machine. No, 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 this is a um, uh, captive portal owner's web, uh, web browser. So first, we are going to connect to internet so that we can access the link we are going to provide. So as you can see, it still connect easily. So we've got access. Here we go. Then we can go to internet. For instance, enw.de, where I work. And then we can go to Alcazar ACC. We authenticate ourselves. Authentication works. Everything is fine. We can check the system. We have access to everything. We can check to authentication. We can go to check activity of users. It's very cool stuff. And then we can click on the link in the email. We use your mail. Okay. We click on the link. Okay, it's copy and paste. We copy and paste it up. And on parallel, the attacker is going to launch Netcat for listening for connections or trying to get connecting to somewhere. We open a new tab, we put the link, and the attack works. As you can see, we have now the connection on the attacker's side. We are directly in ACC Manager. We've got access to the current pages. We can go a little back, and we have access to all pages there. We can directly display them. We are home. We've root privilege. Thank you a lot for your attention. Any questions? No questions? Thank you then. Hope you enjoy. I enjoyed to be with you today. It was very cool to get all of you with me. Thank you very much. Thank you.